River City Junction, River City, next station stop. You're crazy with the heat. Credit's no good for an ocean salesman. Boat, all aboard. Why not? What's the matter with the credit? It's old fashioned. Charlie, you're an anvil salesman. Your firm give credit? No, sir. Nor anybody else. River City, River City next. Cash for the merchandise. Cash for the button hooks. Cash for the cotton heaters. Cash for the hard goods. Cash for the soft goods. Cash for the fancy goods. Cash for the noggins and the piggins and the firkins. Cash for the hogshead cask and demijohn. Cash for the crackers and the pickles and the fly paper. Look, we talk, we talk, we talk, we talk, we talk. Where do you get it? We talk. Talk, you can talk, you can bicker, you can talk, you can bicker, 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 you can talk, you can talk, you can talk, 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 bicker, 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 you can talk all you want of, but it's different than it was. No, it ain't, no, it ain't, but you gotta know the territories. What the model he Ford made the trouble, made the people wanna go, wanna get, wanna get, wanna get up and go. Seven, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, twenty two. 23 miles to the county seat. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Who's going to patronize a little bitty two by four kind of store anymore? We talk, we talk. Where do you get it? Not the Model T at all. Take a gander at the store, at the modern store, at the present day store, at the present day modern departmentalized grocery store. We talk, we talk, we talk, we talk. We talk. Get, where do you get it? We talk, we talk, we talk. Where do you get it? You can talk. You can talk. You can bicker. You can talk. You can talk, 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 talk. Bicker, bicker, bicker. You can talk all you wanna, but it's different than it was. No, it ain't, but you gotta know the territory. What do you need? A biscuit made the trouble. You need a you need to put the crackers in a package, in a package. You need a biscuit in the airtight sanitary package. Made the cracker barrel obsolete, obsolete. Obsolete, obsolete, obsolete. Cracker barrel went out the window with a mail pouch, shut blood, drawn by the stove. Change the approach of a traveling salesman, made it pretty hard. No, it didn't, no, it didn't, but you got another territory. Gone, gone. Gone with the hogshead cask and dimmy gone. Gone with the sugar barrel, pickle barrel, milk pan. Gone with the tub and the pail and the tears. Ever met a fellow by the name of Hill? Hill? Hill! Hill? Hill! 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 No! No! Just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. Never heard any salesman, Hill! Now he doesn't know the territory. Doesn't know the territory. What's the fellow's line? Never worries about his line. Never worries about his line. Or the Cracker Barrel being obsolete. Or the you need a biscuit in an airtight sanitary package. Or the Model T Ford. Just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. Never worries about his line. Never worries about his line. Or a doggone thing. He's just a bang beat, bell ringing, big hog, great go, neck or nothing, rip roaring every time a bullseye salesman. That's Professor Harold Hill, Harold Hill. Tell us what's his line, what's He's his line. He's faking, he doesn't know the territory. Look, wait, talk, wait, talk, wait, talk, wait, talk. He's He's a music man. He's a what? He's a what? He's a music man, and he sells clarinets to the kids in the town with the big trombones and the rat-a-tat drums and the big brass bass, big brass bass, and the piccolo, the piccolo uniforms too with the shiny gold braid on the coat and the big red stripe running. Well, I don't know much about bands, but I do know you can't make a living selling big trombones. No, sir. Mandolin picks, perhaps, and here and there a Jew's heart. No, the fellow sells bands, boys' bands. I don't know how he does it, but he lives like a king, and he dallies, and he gathers, and he plucks, and he shines, and when the man dances, certainly, boys, what else? The piper pays him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When the man dances, certainly, boys, what else? The piper pays him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But he doesn't know the territory. River City, River City, River City. We're across the state line into Iowa. River City, population 2212. Secrets illegal in this state. Board. Now, if you're all through, I'll tell you about Harold Hill. You really know Harold Hill? Never saw him in my life, but I know this much. He's given every one of us a black eye. After he's worked a town over, the next salesman to arrive gets automatically tarred and feathered and rode out to the city limits on a rail. <laughs> you think that's funny? Well, wait till it happens to you. Your hair never grows back. <gasps> Why should he get rode out of town on a rail? Because in order to sell band instruments and uniforms and instruction books, he has to guarantee to teach the kids to play. Well? And to form them kids into a band with himself as the leader. What's wrong with that? 
He don't know one note from another, that's what's wrong with that. And he can't tell a bass drum from a pipe organ. I'll catch up with that swindling two-bit thimble rigger, and when I do, I'll squeal on him so loud. Wow, you're mad, Charlie. Sure like to be around when you catch up with that fella. Well, it won't be on this trip, not in Iowa. Even the great professor Harold Hill wouldn't sell to them neck-bowed Hawkeyes out here. Oh, gentlemen, you intrigue me. I think I'll have to give Iowa a try. Don't believe I caught your name. It is, if you want to go around in your drawers all day. So there I was, up in Madison Hospital, and nobody come to see me. Cousin Will never come, Aunt Bertha never come. Your Aunt Bertha's dead. She wouldn't have come anyways. Cold as you're falling, there's nothing who's in December. If you ask about our weather in July, and we're so bad. to have you with us, even though we may not ever mention it again. Squires, yes. I'm interested in a rig for Sunday, if you could accommodate me. Then I expect you find the man in charge of hiring rigs, who is late as usual. Hey, Gregory. Marcellus. You old son of a what is? Oh, shh. Look, Greg. Professor Hill's the name. 
Harold to... But, but, Greg, what are you doing here? Why didn't you let me know you was coming? I didn't know I was myself. Besides, how was I supposed to know you didn't up in a little tank town like this? You were a pretty big slicker when you were in business with me. Too many close shaves the way you work. Besides, I got me a nice, comfortable girl. Ethel Toffelmeyer, boss's niece. Gone legitimate, huh? I knew you'd come to no good. So what's new pitch? You're not back in the band <laughs> business. I heard you was in Steam Automobiles? I was. What happened? Somebody actually invented one. No. Now, give me the lowdown here, Mars. Well, you'll never get any anywhere in the band business with these stubborn islands, Greg. Besides, we got a stuck-up music teacher here who will expose you before you get your grip unpacked. Male or female? Music teacher? She's a librarian. Female. Perfect. That's what I wanted to hear. If she passes by, point her out to me. I will. So how are you going to start the new pitch? Well, same old way. Keep that music teacher off balance. Then my next step will be to get your city out of the serious trouble it's in. <laughs> River City isn't any trouble. Well, then I'll have to create some. I have to make a desperate need for a boys band. You remember. So what's new around here? What can I use? Nothing. Except the uh, billiard hall just got a new pool table. They never had a pool table before? Nope, only billiards. That'll do. See you later, Mars. And don't forget, music teacher. Music teacher. Ah, you're Mr. Dunlop. Yep. Either you're closing your eyes to a situation you do not wish to acknowledge, or you are not aware of the caliber of disaster indicated by the presence of a pool table in your community. Well, you got trouble, my friend. Right here, I say trouble right here in River City. Why, sure, I'm a billiard player. Certainly mighty proud to say I'm always mighty proud to say it. I consider that the hours I spend with a cue in my hand are golden. Help me cultivate horse sense and a cool head and a keen eye. Did you ever take and try to give an iron cut leave to yourself with a three rail billiard shot? But just as I say, it takes judgment, brains, and maturity to score in a bulk line game. I say that any fool can take and shove a ball in a pocket. And I call that slot the first big step on the road to depths of degradé. I say first it's a little on medicinal wine from a teaspoon, then beer from a bottle. And the next thing you know, your son is playing for money in a pinchback suit. Listening to some big out of town Jasper, hearing him tell about horse race gambling. Not a wholesome trotting race, no, but a race where they set down right on a horse. Like to see some stuck up jockey boy sitting on Dan Hatch. Make your blood boil, well I should say. Now friends, let me tell you what I mean. You got one, two, three, four, five, six pockets in a table. Pockets that mark the difference between a gentleman and a bum with a capital B and that rhymes with P and that stands for bull. And all week long, your River City youth will be frittering away. Your young men will be frittering. Frittering away their noontime, supper time, tour time too. Get the ball in the pocket, never mind. Getting dandelions pulled to the screen door, patched to the beefsteak pounded. Never mind pumping any water till your parents are caught with a cistern empty on a Saturday night. And that's trouble. Oh, yes, you got lots and lots of trouble. I'm thinking of the kids in the knickerbocker shirt and tail young ones peeking in the pool hall window after school. You got trouble. Folks, right here in River City. Trouble with a capital T, and that rhymes with P, and that stands for pool. Now I know all you folks are the right kind of parents. I'm going to be perfectly frank. Would you like to know what kind of conversation goes on while they're loafing around that hall? They'll be trying out Bevo, trying out Cubits, trying out Taylor Mink like cigarette fiends, and bragging all about how they're going to cover up a telltale breath with sense. And one fine night, they leave the pool hall and for the dance of the armory, libertine men and scarlet women and ragtime. Shameless music that'll grab your son and your daughter with the arms of a jungle animal instinct, masteria. <laughs> Friends, the idle brain is the devil's plague on trouble. Oh, right here in River City. Right here in River City. With a capital T and that rhymes with P and that stands for pool. That stands for pool. We've surely got trouble. We've surely got trouble. Right here in River City. Gotta figure out a way to give the young ones moral after school. Our children, children, gonna have trouble, 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 trouble. Mothers of River City, heed this warning before it's too late. Watch for the telltale signs of corruption. The minute your son leaves the house, does he rebuckle his knickerbockers below the knee? 
is there a nicotine stain on his index finger? A dime novel hidden in the corn crib. Is he starting to memorize jokes out of Captain Billy's whiz bang? Are certain words creeping into his conversations? Words like swell and so's your old man. Well, if so, my friends, you got trouble right here in River City. With a capital T and that rhymes with P and that stands for pool. We've surely got trouble right here in River City. Remember the main Plymouth Rock and the Golden Rule. Our children's children, children gonna have trouble. Oh yes, you got trouble. We're in terrible, terrible trouble. That game with the 15 number balls is the devil's tool. Devil's tool. Oh yes, you got trouble, trouble, trouble. Oh yes, we got trouble here. We got big, big trouble. With a T. Gotta rhyme it with P. And that stands for pool. Your... No. Didn't I see you in? No. I'll only be in town a short while. And... Good. It's you, daughter. Yes, Mama. Keep on, Amaryllis. I'll be there in a minute. Dear, now your exercises. I don't remember the liberty of being open last 4th of July. It was, Mama, all evening. Oh, Mama, a man with a suitcase has been following me all over town. Oh? Who? I never saw him before. Did he say anything? He tried. Did you say anything? Mama, of course not. Now don't dawdle, Amaryllis. So do la re ti me a little slower. And please keep the fingers curved as nice and high as you possibly can. Don't get faster, dear. If you don't mind me saying so, it wouldn't have hurt you to find out what the gentleman wanted. I know what the gentleman wanted. What, dear? You'll find it in Balzac. Excuse me for living, but I never read it. Neither has anyone else in this town. There you go again with that same old comment about the low mentality of River City people and taking it all too much to heart. Now, Mama, 
As long as the Madison Public Library was entrusted to me for the purpose of improving River City's cultural level, I can't help my concern that the ladies of River City keep ignoring all my counsel and advice. But darling, when a woman has a husband and you've got none, why should she take advice from you? Even if you can quote Balzac and Shakespeare and all the mother high pollutant Greeks. Mama, if you don't mind me saying so, you have a bad habit of changing every subject. No, I haven't changed the subject. I was talking about that stranger. What stranger? With a suitcase who may be your very last chance. Mama, do you think that I allow a common masher? Now, really, Mama, I have my standards where men are concerned, and I have no intention. I know all about your standards, and if you don't mind me saying so, there's not a man alive who can hope to measure up to that blend of Paul Bunyan, St. Pat, and Noah Webster. You can cough to throw yourself out of your harsh imagination. You are with stubbornness in your library full of books. Well, if that isn't the best I've ever heard, Thank you. Can I have a drink, please? May I have? May a I have a drink, please? Yes, dear. Winthrop, it's after dark. Is that any way to walk into the house? Hello. That won't do at all. I'll have a kiss for me, boy. That lady over there is your sister, young man. Hello, Winthrop. Wintrip, where's your manners? I'm having a party on Saturday. I'd especially like it if you would come. Winthrop? Amaryllis invited you to her party. Are you going or aren't you? No. No what? No, thank you. You know the little girl's name. He won't say Amaryllis because of the S, because of his lisp. He's a shame. We all know about his lisp, Amaryllis. Well, Wintrip? I bet he won't say it. No, thank you, Amaryllis. Amaryllis, Amaryllis. <laughs> He's crying. Why does he get so mad at people? Just because of his lisp? It's not only because of his lisp, Amaryllis. That's just part of it. What's the other part? Never mind, dear. It's just that he never talks very much. Not even to you and your mother? No, we all have to be a little patient. I'm patient. Even though he doesn't ever talk to me, I do him every night. I say goodnight to him on the evening star. You have to do it the very second you see it, or it doesn't count. Good night, my Winthrop. Good night. Sleep tight. Oh, there, darling, don't cry. You have lots of time. If not Winthrop, there'll be someone else. Never. I want to be an old maid like you. <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Marion. Can I play my crosshand piece? May I play? May I play my crosshand piece? Yes, dear. You see? Without a sweetheart, you have no one to say goodnight to on the evening star. I know, Amaryllis. For the time being, just say goodnight by someone. You can put the name in when the right someone comes along. All right, it's better than nothing. Yes, it is. Now you can play your crosshand piece. Now I may play my crosshand piece. my 
I'm sure we're all grateful to my wife, Yu Laili McKechnie Shin, for leading the singing. And J.C. Squires for his fine stereotypical slides. And Ethel Toffelmeyer, our fine player, piano player. Piano. As mayor of River City, I welcome you River City Zians to the 4th of July exercises set up for the indoors here in Madison Gymnasium, counter the weather. Four score. Four score. Ah, the members of the school board will now present a patriotic tableau. The members of the school board will not present a patriotic tableau. Some disagreement about costumes, I suppose. Instead, the Watan Yi girls of the local wigwam of Hiawatha will present a spectacle, my wife. <laughs> In which, my wife. Yu Laili McKechnie Shin will take a leading part. That cracker. I know who did it. Tommy Chulis did it. Tommy Chulis did it. Yes, it was Tommy Chulis. Tommy Chulis, I wouldn't move if I asked you. Mrs. Shin <gasps> will recover. <gasps> no thanks to a certain young ruffian who is a disgrace to our city. Four score and seven. The Payne's fireworks spectacle. Last days of Pompey Eye will take place, providing the rain stops by 9.30. It'll be out to Madison Picnic Park in the far meadow, across the creek from the pest house. How can it be raining? Didn't the Gazette predict fair? Well, it sure did, Ewart. That's why we all prepared for a storm. The Gazette's accurate most of the time, and you know it, JC. You wouldn't last very long in the banking business being accurate most of the time. No, you know Now, just a minute. Let's have order here. Order, order. Number eight's late again tonight. I make her early. She's late, all right. She's right on time. What's the matter with your watch? What's the matter Will with you members watch? of the school board stop bigger all than in public? All I said was... Never mind. Four score. We heard there's a pool table in town. Yeah, that's what I heard. Now, just a minute. Is it a pool table or isn't it? Will you allow me to get on with the exercises? We don't want any more exercises until we get the pool table matter settled. Yeah. Yeah. Let's protect our children. Yeah. Yeah. Resist sin and corruption. Yeah. yeah! Smite that devil and keep our young boys pure! Yeah. yeah! Friends, may I have your attention, please? Attention, please! I can deal with this trouble, friends, with a wave of my hand, this very hand. Please observe me if you will. I'm Professor Harold Hill, and I'm here to organize the River City Boys Band. Prrrr. Oh, think, my friends, how can any pool table ever hope to compete with the gold trombone? Ra ra, ra da 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 ra ra. Remember, my friends, what a handful of trumpet players did to the famous fable walls of Jericho. Oh, billiard parlor walls come a tumbling down. Oh, a band will do it, my friends. Oh, yes, I'm in a boys band. Do you hear me? I said, River City's gotta have a boys band, and I mean she needs it today. 
Well, Professor Harold Hill's on hand, and River City's gonna have her boys band. As sure as the Lord made little green apples, and that band's gonna be in uniform. Asher, Gracie, Ryan, Rosie. And you'll see the glitter of crashing cymbals, the thunder of rolling drums, the shimmer of trumpets. Tun ta da! And you'll feel something akin to the electric thrill I once enjoyed. When Gilmore, Liberati, Pat Conway, the great creator, and W.C. Handy all came to town on that very same historic day. 76 trombones led the big parade with 110 cornets close at hand. They were followed by rows and rows of the finest virtuosos, the cream of every famous band. 76 trombones caught the morning sun with 110 cornets right behind. There were more than a thousand reeds swinging up like weeds. There were horns of every shape and kind. There were copper bottom timpani and horse platoons thundering, thundering all along the way. Double bell euphoniums and big bassoons. Each bassoon having his big fat say. There were 50 mounted cannon in the battery. Thundering, thundering louder than before. Clarinets of every size and trumpeters who'd improvise a full octave higher than the score. This calls for emergency action. That man is a spellbinder. I haven't seen Iowa people get so excited since the night Frank Gutch and Strangler Lewis lay on a mat for three and a half hours without moving a muscle. Never mind. I want his credentials. He grabbed that hoodlum. He almost blew up Mr. Shin. Thank you, Professor. I have to make an example of him. Ringleader, you know. What he does, the gang does. Gee, Lily Clark, let me go. You wild kid, you, hanging around my oldest girl. His father's one of them day laborers just south of town. You wild kid, you, tagging after my oldest girl last Sunday. We are just walking together. Gee, Lee Clark. You watch your phraseology. I know what you's doing, my little Gracie Senior. Now you stay away from my oldest girl, or you'll hear from me till who laid the rails. Hill, I'll talk to you Monday morning about this band thing. Over at City Hall, 10 o'clock sharp. Men. I want that spellbinder's credentials. Oh, Constable, I'll be responsible for the boy. Tommy, I'd like to talk to you about the band. Aw, oh, gee, Professor, that's for the little kids. Oh, I'm not talking about you being in the band. You're mechanically minded, aren't you? Ever done anything with perpetual motion? I nearly had it a couple times. You did? You're my man. Do you realize nobody has ever invented a music holder from watching piccolo player? No place to hang the music. Gee, Lee Clark, I wonder where I could get me some wire. Look in your cellar. That's where people keep wire. Oh, Tommy. Yes, now, sir? Now, Constable, I'll show you how to break up a gang. 
Oh, young lady. Oh, miss. Uh, what's your name? Zanita. <laughs> I didn't have any idea you was beckoning to me. You can guess. Do you know how Tommy Julius? Well, I... Tommy, this is Zanita. Escort the young lady home. Only accepting I'm not going home. I have to go to the library. You can guess. Then escort the young lady home by the way of the library. By the way of the candy kitchen. Do I have to? You have to. Yes, sir. Yes. Professor, you're a pretty bright young fellow. You made a couple mistakes, though. Oh? The mayor happens to own the billiard parlor and that new pool table. Wow. Uh, what was my other mistake? That's Anita. She's the mayor's oldest girl. Just a minute. Professor Hill. For the school board, we'd like to see your credentials. Academic certificates. Nothing of the kind. We need letters and papers. Make him put up a bond. Wait, wait, what am I hearing? You. Say. Ice cream. Ice cream, but I don't sing, young man. All right, you're... talk then. Down here. Ice cream. Talk slow. Ice cream. See, singing is only sustained talking. Ice cream. Now you. Ice cream. Now you, sir. Ice cream. <laughs> Ladies, from now on, you'll never see one of these men without the other three. <laughs> Why, Professor, you're wrong. They've hated each other over 15 years. Ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. I don't suppose you live alone or anything? No. I've got some wonderful caramels over at the hotel if you... Mr. Hill. Uh, Professor Hill. Professor of what? At what college do they give a degree for annoying women on the street like a Saturday night rowdy at a public dance hall? Oh, I wouldn't know about that. I'm a conservatory man myself. Gary, Indiana, gold medal class of Ot 5. Even should that happen to be true, does that give you the right to follow me around wherever I go? Another thing, Mr. Hill, I'm not as easily hoodwinked or mesmerized as some people in this town, and I think it only fair to warn you that I have a shelf full of reference books in there which may very well give me some interesting information about you. Hey, Gregory. Oh, hi, Marcellus. Don't call me Greg. How'd you make out with the music teacher? Scrumptious. Ate out of my hand the minute I tipped my hat. <laughs> she did, boy. You sure cut a swath tonight. For a minute, even, I thought you knew something about leading a band. <laughs> Just like when you imitate that band concert fellow back in Joplin. <laughs> oh, kid stuff. I'm in rare form these days, son. Just keep your eyes on me for the next four weeks. Four weeks? It only used to take ten days for the instruments to arrive. 
It still does, but it takes four weeks for the uniforms. Oh no, Greg, you haven't added uniforms. Uniforms and instruction books. Instruction books? You can't pass yourself off as a music professor. Not for any four weeks. Mars. Well, you don't know one note from another. I have a revolutionary new method called the think system, where you don't bother with notes. But in four weeks, the people want to hear music. You'll have to lead a band. But when the uniforms arrive, they forget everything else, at least long enough for me to collect and leave. Well, this is a refined operation, son. I've got it time to write down to the last wave of the brakeman's hand on the last train out of town. Now, Mr. Washburn, if you'll excuse me. Ethel Toffemeyer, the pianola girl, and this is Mrs. Squires and Mrs. Hicks, and of course you can't forget Eulalie McKechnie Shin, our mayor's wife. Isn't it exciting, Eulalie? Oh, I couldn't say. I couldn't say. Oh no, I could not say. My husband will wish to investigate, I'm sure, and naturally, I'm reticent. Oh yes, I'm reticent. Of course, Mrs. Shin, I understand, but you see, part of my music plans include a committee on the dance and... No, wait. That again, Mrs. Shin, the, the way you raised your foot just now. Oh, well, I have a bunion there that bothers. <laughs> what grace, what natural flow of rhythm, what expression of line and movement. Mr. Hill. <laughs> you must accept the chairmanship on the ladies' classic auxiliary for dance. Mustn't she, ladies? Oh, yes, yes. yes. Every move you make bespeaks Del Sart. Will you, will you? Please say yes, Mrs. Shin. You lady McKechnie Shin. Uh, well, I, uh, dancing, that is. Well, then you accept. Uh, yes, and I would like to say... Uh, thank you. Uh, now, the lady who plays the piano, uh, Marion Peru, I believe? Pick a little, talk a little, pick a little, talk a little, cheep, 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 talk a lot, pick a little more, pick a little, talk a little, pick a little, talk a little, cheep, 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 talk a lot, pick a little more, pick a little, talk a little, pick a little, talk a little, cheep, 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 talk a lot, pick a little more, pick a little, talk a little, pick a little, talk a little, cheep, 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 on any committee. Of course, I should tell you this, but she advocates dirty books. Dirty books? Chaucer, Rabelais, Balzac. And the worst thing, of course, I should tell you this, but I'll tell. The man lives on my street, let me tell. Stop, I'll tell. She made brazen overtures to a man who never had a friend in this town till she came here. Old Miser Madison. Miser Madison. Madison Gymnasium. Madison Picnic Park. Madison Hospital. That Miser Madison? Exactly. Who do you think he was anyways? Well, I should say. Show off. Gave the town the library too, didn't he? That's just it. When he died, he left the library building to the city. But he left all the books to her. She was seen going and coming from his place. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That woman made brazen overtures with a guilt edge guarantee. She had a golden glint in her eyes and a silver voice with a counterfeit ring. Just melt her down and you'd reveal a lump of lead as cold as steel. Here, where a woman's heart should be. He left River City, the library building, but he left all the books to her. Chaucer, Rabelais, Balls. Yes, I have just what you want in my hotel room. Good night, ladies. Good night, ladies. Good night, ladies. Farewell, 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 Farewell,
It's all right. I know everything, and it doesn't make any difference. What are you talking about? You were probably very young. Anyone can make a mistake. What? No explanations, no questions, please. I will only be in town a short while. Will you please make your selection and leave? I have. Well, what do you want to take out? The librarian. Quiet, please. The librarian. You're not listening, Marion. Look. Marion. Marbles. Six Steelies, eight Aggies, a dozen Pee Wees, and one big glassy with an American flag in the middle. I think I'll drop them. No! Shh! Madam Librarian. What can I do, my dear, to catch your ear? I love you madly, madly, Madam Librarian. Marion, heaven help us if the library caught on fire and the volunteer host brigade men had to whisper the news to Marion. Madam Librarian. What can I say, my dear, to make it clear? I need you badly, badly, Madam Librarian. Marion, if I stumbled and I bust in my whatchamacallit, I could lie on your floor unnoticed till my body had turned to Rian. Madam Librarian. Now in the moonlight, a man could sing it. In the moonlight, and a fellow would know that his darling had heard every word of his song with the moonlight, helping along. But when I try in here to tell you, dear, I love you madly, madly, Madam Librarian. Marion, it's a long lost cause I could never win. For the civilized world accepts as unforgivable sin. Any talking out loud with any librarian, such as Marion. Madam Librarian. I try in here to tell you, dear, I love you madly, madly, Madam Librarian. Marion, it's a long lost cause I could never win. For the civilized world accepts as unforgivable sin. Any talking out loud with any librarian, such as Marion. The Ladies Dance Committee meets Tuesday nights. Madam Librarian. Marshmallow.
Well, Tommy, we've had a pretty good morning. 11 sales out of 12 tries. Tell you what, it's almost noon. You better go home and get some dinner. I'll try a couple by myself. Goodbye, Professor. Thanks, Tommy. Just a minute here. Are you soliciting? You haven't got a license. Uh, why no, Merson? I, I collect doorbells. And this particular specimen has an unusual tone quality that... Flattery will not avail you. Soliciting is statutory in this county. Malfeasance without a permit. Why haven't you been down to City Hall with your references? I just missed you. I... Uh... Mayor Shin. Y your hand. Oh. No. What? What? That spread of the little finger. It's hereditary. Oh, it is? What does that mean? It means that your son's little finger is perfectly situated to operate the spit valve on a B-flat flugelhorn. Is that good? Good? It means that America has at last produced an artist who can flugel the minute waltz in 50 seconds. How can I get one of those horns? Sign here, Mr. Mayor. That'll be $17, import fee. Yes, sir. Just think I could have missed this whole... I haven't got any son! <laughs> you unscrupulous flu by night! You unflipulous! You be down to City Hall with your by gosh papers at 3 o'clock! You mean this afternoon? I couldn't make myself any plainer if I was a Quaker on his day off. Mrs. Peru, do you realize you have the facial characteristics of a cornet virtuoso? Well, I'm not sure I understand you entirely, Professor. If your boy has that same firm chin and those splendid cheek muscles, by George, not that he could be really great or anything, you understand. Oh, is that so? And in the name of St. Bridget, why not? Well, you see, all of the really great cornet players were Irish, uh, O'Clark, O oh, Mendez, O oh, Klein. But Professor, we are Irish. No. No, really. That clenches it. Sign here, Mrs. Peru. Your boy was born to play the cornet. Oh, that'll be $7, earnest money. Nothing more due to the first installment payable at opening of band practice. Thank you. And of course, I'll need the boy's measurements for his band uniform. His uniform? Hello, son. Certainly his uniform. And there won't be a penny due till delivery, which gives, gives him four weeks to enjoy, to anticipate, and to imagine at no cost whatever. Never allow the demands of tomorrow to interfere with the pleasures and excitements of today. Do you have a stripe? A stripe? Certainly, certainly, my boy. A wide red stripe on each side. What do you think of that? You'll have to excuse Winthrop, Professor. We can't get him to say three words a day, even to us. And if you could get him to play in the band, you'll have St. Michael's own way with you. But I'll bet if anybody can do it, you can. Out of a crowd, I'll pick you for a hard carrying, clay pipe smoking, harp playing, shamrock wearing, mavernine pinching, terrace hall mistral singing Irish, maybe gab, maybe jabbers. Where are you from, me boy? Gary, Indiana. Oh, I knew it. Gary. What did you say? Gary, Indiana. In fact, Gary Conservatory was my alma mater. Was she now? Why, yes. Gold medal class of Ot 5. How to do, Miss Peru? How to do, Mr. Hill? Of course. Peru. I, I thought the name sounded familiar. I, I tried to see you the other night. <laughs> he wants to put Winship in the band. <laughs> We're not interested, Mama. But Mary and the boy might have his father's musical gift. He does have me jaw, you know. Oh, your husband musical? I'd like to have a talk with him. I'm sure we could. Do you burst in on everyone's homes like this, prying into personal affairs? We're not interested. Marianne! 
Well, that's one for and one against. Now, why not let the boy's father decide? The boy's father is dead. Anything else? Oh, I'm sorry. But that's all the more reason why your brother should have something like this. My brother is a ten-year-old problem child who can't understand why his father was taken away. Would you care to explain it to him? He's been brooding about it for two years. As to your musical tricks, why don't you go into business with some nice carnival man who sells gold-painted watches and glass diamond rings? Musical tricks? Now, Miss Peru, I hardly think that's fair. I get the feeling she likes the idea. A little cautious, perhaps, but I admire that in a woman. Just keep me alive, and I'll be back later in the week. One moment, Professor. About the boy's measurements. Why well, make all his clothes? Sleeve 21, waist 18, crouch 14. Fine. That's all I need. Now, I really must get back to the hotel. You'll have to excuse Marion. She's not really... Oh, please, don't worry about a thing. I'm sure that at heart, she's as lovely as yourself. Good day to you, Oda Peru. Has he gone? He has, and oh, I hope not forever. Darling, don't you ever think of your future? Gary Conservatory class of about five. Now, darling... Now, Mama, surely a girl's future doesn't depend on encouraging every fast-talking, self-centered, woman-chasing, traveling man who comes to town. And the fact that he claims his commodity is music does not, in this particular case, impress me. All right, darling, all right. Although it's a well-known principle that if you keep the flint in one drawer and the steel in another, you'll never strike much of a fire. Mama... Winthrop? Winthrop, I know you're there. Please go to the library and ask Miss Grubb for the book I've set aside. It's the Indiana State Educational Journal, 1890 to 1910. It's a large brown volume with black corners. We'll have to. You won't have to talk to anyone. I've written it all down. Thank you, dear. Now, what are you up to? Why do you need all those books at this hour of the night? I have a feeling the Indiana Journal may help me poke some large holes in the professor's claims. Well, I give up. At your age, if you don't mind for asking, what kind of white knight do you expect to come riding along? <laughs> well, I'm not waiting for Luther Greiner, who backs me into the ancient history shelf every time he comes to the library. He does? Or Ed Gamage with that buggy of his with the removable back seat. But I'm not waiting for a man in shining white armor either. My white knight, not a Lancelot, nor an angel with wings, just someone to love me, who is not ashamed of a few nice things. My white knight, what my heart would say if it only in us than in me. And if occasionally he'd ponder what makes Shakespeare and Beethoven great, him I could love till I die, him I could love till I die. Bye. 
Hey, Zainita. Tommy, Pop and Mom are sitting right there in the bank. Get gats. All right, then meet me after supper. I can't. It's Epworth League night. Meet you where? The footbridge. You see, isn't that just what I was saying? First the lumberyard and now the footbridge. And where will you meet me after that? In the black hole of Calcutta? Eat gats. I only wanted to show you my invention. What invention? It's my music holder for marching piccolo player. See, it still has a couple of minor flaws. Like, when you hold it steady enough to keep the music straight, it cuts off circulation, and you can't really move your fingers. But meanwhile, you could go blind. Tommy, it's Papa! Is that the first thing I said or not? Yes, George. Yes, the very first thing I said. For all eat hay with the horse. Get that spellbinder's credentials I said, morning of July 4th, 19 and 12. And now look, my wife is off dancing at any and all hours instead of in the home. But George... The school board is singing up street and den down alley instead of tending the city matters. My oldest girl is boodling around with some wild kid. And my business has fallen off so far, I can't even find the balance sheet. Mayor Shin, I found something very interesting in this book about Professor Hill's alma mater. His who? His university. I know all about that. In fact, that's all I can ever get out of him. Gary Conservatory, class of Aught Five. I think if you'll just take a little bit of time to read about the conservatory, you won't have to look much further. It's on page... Papa, Papa, the Wells Fargo wagons just come out from the depot. Uh, Wells Fargo wagon. wagon? A likely story. At this hour of the day, nonsense. The Wells Fargo wagon. The band instruments. Oh, the Wells Fargo wagon is a coming down the street. Oh, please let it be for me. Oh, the Wells Fargo wagon is a coming down the street. I wish, I wish I knew what it could be. The maple sugar on my birthday. In March I got a gray Mackinac. Oh, the Wells Fargo wagon is a coming down the street. A free pays for fries or COD. It could be curtains or dishes or a double boiler. Or it could be. Yes, you're right. It sure, sweet, right. It surely could be something special. Something very, very special now. Just for me. I got some salmon from Seattle last September, and I expect a new rocking chair. The DARF sent a cannon for the courthouse square. Oh, the Wells Fargo wagon is up coming now. I don't know how I can ever wait to be. It could be something. Men, you will each receive individual instruction in due course. In the meantime, get acquainted with your instruments, stay off the streets, and be thinking about the minuet in G. La di da di da di da di da. La di da. La di da. La di da. Oh, sister, it's the most haunted 
saw a gold thing you ever saw. I never thought I'd see anything so scrumpty that this scrumpty saw a gold thing. Oh, sister. Round one for you, Mr. Hill. But I better hear some by gosh tune down them horns in pretty short order, or I'll see you in front of the grand jury over at the county seat. That was Marion. How about that book? Come, George. Take this from you. Get you watch your phraseology. Get along if you want to. I've got to get something from the librarian. How about that book? The ladies' dance committee meets Tuesday nights at the high school. Ladies, lovely. <laughs> now turn. Take your bodies with you. Lovely. Turn. Okay, let's have a go at our Grecian urns. <laughs> that our Del Sar display will be the highlight of the ice cream sociable. <laughs> uh, now, gentlemen, if you're ready. And ladies, remember, don't make me tell you again. Always keep your face to the audience. Mr. Dunlop, if you're ready. It's you in the sunrise, it's you in my cup, it's you all the way into town. It's your sweet hello dear that sets me up, and it's your got to go dear that gets me Kids, Mrs. Shin will have my head. Mr. Washburn, we're entitled to 15 more minutes. Look, if you think you can hold these kids back, then go ahead. <laughs> Start her up, Mr. Washburn. Wait till you see the new steps Professor Hill taught us. What will it be then? The Shapoopy. Shapoopy! 
Now a woman who kisses on the very first date is usually a hussy. And a woman who kisses on the second time out is anything but fussy. A woman who waits till the third time around, head in the clouds, feet on the ground. She's the girl he's glad he's found. She's his shapoopy, 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 shapoopy. Shapoopy, shapoopy, shapoopy. But you can't win her yet. Walk her once to raise the curtain, then you walk around twice, you may for certain. Yeah. Oh, once more in the flower garden, she'll never get sore and beg pardon. Squeeze her once when she is a looking, then you get a squeeze back, that's fancy cooking. Oh, once more from half rubber, she'll never get sore on the way to supper. Now a little sound was a no gal as anyone could see. Look at her now, she's a go gal who only goes for me. Squeeze her once when she is a looking, then you get a squeeze back, that's fair. But once more from heaven, she never gets sore on the way to supper. Hands off my daughter! Papa! Mayor Shin, Your Honor, your daughter and I will go and study behind your back. Why, you... We'd rather be doing it in front of your back, but... What? Never mind. Zany is scared of you, but I'm not. I should think you'd hate to have your own daughter scared of you. I'm gonna warn you once more. If I ever catch you touching my daughter again, I'll by gosh horse whip you till heck won't have it again. Now, George. Not one poop out of you, madam. I think he means beep. <laughs> yes. Now get out of this public building. I have as much right to this public building as anybody. Right? How do you get any right around here? Aiding and abetting the swindling activities of that spellbinding symbol salesman? You know what I see written all over you? Reform school. Now get out. Get out, you wild kid. Papa, please. It can't be that's like you make blood in the marketplace. You got. You watch your phraseology, young woman. Go home. You, Laylee. Hey, yes, George, I only... You tend to your dance. My dance? All handles, Anita. Taken up with the wild kids from the wrong side of town. Yeah, it just makes you understand. Well, you can't. And by the way, thanks for nothing. 
I read that book you gave me from cover to cover for a whole week now and didn't find a thing. Mr. Mayor, if you please. I'll settle your hash as soon as I get these premises off my oldest girl. <clears throat> yes? All right. But in the meantime, I'm vouching for Tommy Gilas. That boy's got the confidence of every kid in this town. You'll be standing in line waiting to shake his hand by the time our band plays its first concert. By the time your band plays its first concert, the individual members will have to foregather in wheelchairs on account of the broken legs they'll get from tripping over their beards. I'll tell you something, my fine young feathered... My feathered young... Never mind. Oliver, JC, Ewart, Owen. I want that man's references, and I want him tonight. Don't let him out of your sight. He is slippier than a Mississippi sturgeon. You mean you want us to, uh, get his credentials? Get his papers or get him in jail. Couldn't make myself any clearer if I was a button hook in a well water. You, young lady, you come with me. Professor Hill, I think Mayor Shin has behaved abominably, and I think it was wonderful of you coming to Tommy's defense. Oh, that was nothing. Yes, it was. No, the man can't dodge the issue every time a little personal risk is involved. Uh, what does the poet say? A uh, coward dies a thousand deaths, the brave man only five hundred. <laughs> Unfortunately, of course, the mayor was already pretty mad on account of his billiard parlor, and now I suppose a recommendation from a musical authority such as yourself would help, but I couldn't think of asking you to do a thing like that. Why, Professor Hill? You would? I'd be glad to. I just wish I was a little more informed. I've been wanting to talk to you about Winthrop's cornet. His cornet? Mother of pearl keys. I'm sure it's fine. But you see, he never touches it. Oh, the first week or so, he made a few, um, experimental blats, I guess you'd say? Yes, yes, blats. <laughs> and he sings the minuet and g-da-da almost constantly. La-di-da-di-da-di-da-di-da, la-di-da, la-di-da. But he never touches the cornet. Well, you he see. says you told him it wasn't necessary. Well, he tells me about some think system. If he thinks the minuet in G, he won't have to bother with any notes. Now, Professor. Miss Marion, the think system is a revolutionary method, I'll admit. So was Galileo's conception of the heavens, Columbus' conception of the egg of globe, Bach's conception of the well tempered clavichord. Now, I cannot discuss these things here in public, but if you'll allow me to call. When may I call? Oh, why, any night this week. Pick a little, talk a little, pick a little, talk a little. Please, 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 please join us, Elsa Committee. You are so dear to see you. Cheep, 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 cheep,
There he is. Sorry, Professor, but we got our orders. We all been deputized. Ah, yes. Great. Congratulations. Now, let's see. You know all week I've tried to give you fellows my references and credentials, but every, team, every time you seem to get off the subject somehow. Now, I have just what you want up in my hotel room. Take me a second. Sorry. Afraid I'll have to go along with you. Uh, yes. Well, let's see if I have my key. Oh, what's this? A testimonial from Madame Rini, the only female bassoon player ever to appear on the Red Path circuit. Her stage name, of course. Actually, she was from Moline. Lida Rose Quackenbush. Could I see that for a minute? Oh, you'll never forget the name. Lida Rose. Same as the old song. Lida Rose, I'm home again, Rose. You get the sun back in the sky. Lida Rose, I'm home again, Rose. About a thousand kisses shy. Ding dong ding. I can hear the chapel bell chime. Ding dong ding. At the least suggestion, I'll pop the question. Lighter rose, I'm home again, Rose, without a sweetheart to my name. Lighter rose, now everyone knows that I am hoping you're the same. So here is my love song, not fancy or with yourself.
Will you ever tell him? Won't you ever tell him? Ah, yes. Ah, no. Ah, Willow Wigs, just open your mouth and let it come out. No, Mama. No, nothing. If he comes to call again, you'll get him alone, and if you don't have the gumption to tell him how you feel. Tell him? Well, there's nothing wrong with a ladylike hint. Mama! Winthrop, where have you been? Fithin. Fishing? With Harold. You mean Professor Hill? Mm-hmm, and look, I still have some work left. <laughs> Did you have a good time? Grump did. He told me all about his hometown, Gary, Indiana. And he taught me a song that so hardly had an essence in it. Gary, Indiana, Gary, Indiana, Gary, Indiana, let me tell you once again. have to change for the sociable. There's time later. Shins live around here somewhere? Uh, the Shin home is on East Elm. This is West Elm. Oh, criminy. Uh, I see you're the piano teacher in town. You must know about this fellow Hill forming a boys band here. Yes. Well, don't let it worry you no more. I've got the goods on him in spades, swindling two-bit thimble rigger. That's why I got to see Shin. I'm just passing through. Number eight only makes a 15-minute water stop. Uh, who are you? Name's Charlie Cowell, Amble Salesman. But just now, I'm out to protect the good name of the traveling fraternity from this swindler. Mr. Cowell, you're making a big mistake. Mistake my old lady's corset cover. That fellow's been a raspberry seed of my wisdom tooth just long enough. He spoiled Illinois for me, and he's not going to spoil Iowa. If you'll just listen to me for a minute. I'd like to. No, I gotta get back on that train. I gotta leave this dynamite with somebody on the way to the depot. Bye, girly girl. See you next time through. You'll never make that train at the depot. You'll have to catch it at the crossing. No, sir. I've got to leave word, and I can tell you ain't the one to leave it with. Uh, just a minute, Mr. Cowell. You don't know me yet. Yes? No, I mean, I don't know you. Mm-hmm. I mean, as well as I'd like to. I never met a man who sells anvils before. That's something, well, quite different. Takes a real salesman, I can tell you that. Anvils have a limited appeal, you know. <laughs> what am I doing? I missed that train, I'll get fired. And I've got to leave word about that fellow Hill. I'll leave word with me. Not on your tintype. How do I know you deliver these letters? Try me. <laughs> There's your train, now run for it. Why, you double-dealing little? Who do you think you're protecting? That guy's got a girl in every county in Illinois, and that's a hundred and two counties. Not to mention the piano teachers like you he cozies up to to keep their mouths shut. Neither one of you's heard the last of me, girly girl. I can hear the chapel bell chime. Ding dong ding. At the least suggestion, I'll pop the question. Light a rose, I'm home again, rose. Without a sweetheart to my name. Good evening, Miss Marianne. Light a rose now, everyone knows that I am hoping you're the same. So here is my love song, not fantastic. 
and see or find Thy the rose, oh, won't you be mine Marian, Marian Thy the rose, oh, thy the to just now? Why, Professor who? Mrs. Peru, top of the evening. Miss Marion? You and Marion come up and said, Oi, I've got some jelly on the stove. There's no jelly on the stove, Mama. Well, I'll put some on. <laughs> Shall we set, as your mother said? Uh, well, I... You did ask me to call. Did I... I didn't mean anything. Now, Miss Marion, I'm not suggesting your invitation inferred anything but academic enlightenment. The think system? I've been by your house a time or two this week to try to explain it, but there always seem to be people around. Mostly ladies, I thought. Uh, yes, Mrs. Squires and several of the ladies. I'm glad. Wouldn't want anybody beating my time. You wouldn't? No, ma'am. Well, it's evidently not the convenient night. Uh, see you at the social later. Professor Hill, is it really true that you've had a hundred? What I'm trying to say is... Yes? Is it really true that you've developed a think system? A, a what? A think system? Why, yes, it's really very simple. As simple as whistling. No one has to show you how to use your lips when whistling. You simply have to think a tune to have it come out clearly here. Now just try this yourself before you ask any questions. I take your word. Could we sit down? Are all music teachers as dense as I am? All music teachers? I dare say you meet dozens, maybe even a hundred. Well, I... Have they all been as fascinated as I have with the think system? Some more, some less. One young lady had thought of the same system before I came to her town. She showed me a few refinements. I see. Have I said something wrong? Please don't let me keep you, Professor Hill. I'm sure you have many more important things to do than explain the think system to me. I can't think of one. And I must be very dull company for a man of your experience. Now say, where'd you get an idea like that? One hears rumors of traveling salesmen. Now, Miss Marion. You mustn't believe everything you hear. After all, one even hears rumors about librarians. I suppose you're referring to Uncle Maddie. Uncle Maddie? Mr. Madison, my father's best friend. No matter what they say, he left me an assured job so that Mother and Winthrop and I would have some security. Surely you don't believe. Oh, of course not. That's exactly what I'm saying. Why do you think people start those rumors? Narrow-mindedness? Jealousy? Jealousy mostly, I guess. Exactly. And jealousy mostly starts rumors about traveling salesmen. What have you heard? Oh, oh, nothing about you personally, just generally. What have you heard generally? Just that, but of course, it stands to reason that, that disappointment and jealousy might easily lead to, I mean, take you for instance. Your attention to customers and, well, teachers, might easily be misinterpreted, mightn't they? I mean, honestly now, mightn't they? Why? And so you say, if another salesman, or somebody, were jealous, they could be downright lies, couldn't they? What could? Rumors and things. Why, of course. And it just proves that you should never believe everything you hear. I mean, if you just discuss Ms. things... Miss Marion, I would be delighted to discuss anything in the world with you. But couldn't we do it sitting down? You, you do sit, your knees bend and all. We could sit on the porch steps. We could also sit on a large hollow log over at the footbridge. I couldn't think of it. I've never been to the footbridge with a man in my life. Just to talk. I've got to dress for the sociable. Then meet me there in 15 minutes. I just can't, I'm sorry, some other time, maybe tomorrow. Dear little librarian, Pile up enough tomorrows, 
and you'll find that you've collected nothing but a whole lot of empty yesterdays. I don't know about you, but I'd like to make today worth remembering. Oh, so would I. The footbridge, 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Mama? What, dear, what? I just told Professor Hill I'd meet him at the footbridge in 15 minutes. Oh, glory be and the saints be praised. It works. What does? Oh, I've been using the think system on you from the parlor. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Greg, the uniforms have arrived, and the kids are in them already, and the people are going to be screaming for music if those kids show up at the sociable tonight. Yeah. Uh, here's most of the dough. I got Tommy to collect it. He's trying to keep the kids together. Uh, pretend to hold a band practice over by the lumber mill. All right, Mars, uh, go get the rig. I got it. Uh, what time's the freight go? Um, 9.40 from the junction. Well, it's not even 8.30 yet. Look, if you want to turn a wordle around here and get yourself don't, caught don't up in the Don't worry, Mars. I'll meet you at the hotel in plenty of time. Miss Marion, you're late. But you said 15 minutes. I meant that you were about, well, I should say about 26 years too late. It took you this long to get to the footbridge with a fellow. If you want to know the truth, it was almost longer. Oh? Halfway here, I nearly turned back. I suppose I'm not the first to find it easier to think clearly when not under the spell of your salesmanship. Now, Miss Marion, surely you don't believe I've been selling you anything. No, you've given me something. That's why I came. I don't recall giving you- Oh yes, you have. Something beautiful. That's why I came, and I'm glad. Oh, please don't be afraid that I expect too much more. One can't expect a traveling salesman to stay put. I know there have been many ports of call, and there will be many more. But that's no reason for me not to be grateful for what you will have left behind for me. Marion, I... Scott. 
Marion, there's a lot of things you don't know about me. Psst, hey, Greg. Uh, excuse me, I'm expecting a cable from Hector Berlioz. This could be it. What now? Who's the salesman here? Sounds like she's selling and you're buying. You nuts. I didn't know I was going to be able to leave tonight. I had to keep her off balance. I told you. Look, she's so far off balance now, you can't tell her from a cat boat in a hurricane. Now beat it. Go get the ring. Never a peaceful moment in the banning business. Now then, where were we? You were about to tell me what I don't know about you. Uh, yeah, well, we don't really have to go into that now, do we? No, we don't. Or ever for that matter, Harold. The librarian hasn't felt much like doing research lately, but she did plenty when you first came here. Oh, about what? About Professor Harold Hill, Gary Conservatory of Music, gold medal class of Ot Five. Harold, there wasn't any Gary Conservatory in Ot Five. Why, there certainly Because were. the town wasn't even built until Ot Six. I'll see you at the sociable. You knew all the time? Since July 7th, three days after you came here. I tore this page out of the Indiana Journal. It was originally intended to use against you. But now I give it to you with all my heart. But if you knew, why didn't you... Oh, why you a little... While a hundred and ten cornets played the air, then I modestly took my place as the one and only bass, and I oompahed up and down the square. Good night, my someone. Good night, my love. With a hundred and ten cornets right behind. Our story shining. There were horns of every shape and Sweet dreams be yours, dear, if dreams there be While a hundred and ten cornets played the air I wish I may and I wish I might Now, good night, my someone. Good night. Greg! Greg, this guy is crazy. He's going all over town spilling everything. I'll <laughs> say I'm crazy. Missed my train, probably lost my job, but I got you now, Hill. And you'll pay. You'd be in the clink right now had it been for that piano teacher. I told her all about you, and what'd she do? Millie gags around me till I couldn't get to see Shin. Dried up, man-hungry, doxing Get around out of me. here! I'll kill you, you dirty you mouth. Bully, you big blow-off. I'll stay in this town till you get yours up, down, through, and sideways. Why, you never even knew the territory. Here's your stuff, Greg. Come on, hurry up. Grecian urn, two Grecian urns, and a fountain. Stop! Stop! Listen to this man! You gullible green grass goats! Can't you get it through your heads? You're being swindled out of your teeth right now, this minute! There's a burglar in the bedroom while you're fiddling in the parlor. I'm talking about Harold Hill, <gasps> road agent, highwayman, pickpocket! Pickpocket? 
Same thing. He's had his hand in your wallet, mister, and yours, madam, and yours, little lady, ever since the first moment he came into this town. Why, there's more documented evidence than you'll ever have time to read. There isn't any ban, there never has been any ban, and there never will be any ban. And if you don't hunt down this man right now like a mad dog, there won't be any Harold Hill either. He'll be on the next train out of town. Now will you believe me? Well, what are we waiting for? I want my money back. Money back? I want his hide. After him. And when you find him, bring him to the schoolhouse. After him. Try the low road. Look by the creek. Try the mill. Back at the privy. For you. Where have you been? Harold, I was looking for Winthrop. He's run away. Please go, Harold. They're even talking about tar and feathers. I had to see you, Marion. It's all right. Don't you know that? You don't owe me a word, not a word. Now go, please. Greg! Uh, he's not here. Let's try down by the crick. Winthrop! Hey, wait a minute, your son. I'm not your son. Leave go of me. Not until I talk to you for a minute. I won't listen. You wouldn't tell the truth anyway. I would too. Would not. Would too tell you anything you want to know. Can you lead a band? No. Are you a big liar? Yes. Are you a dirty, rotten crook? Yes. Now leave go me, you big liar. What's the matter? You wanted the truth, didn't you? No, I'm bigger than you, and you're going to stand here and get it all, so you might as well quit wiggling. Thank you. Now, there's two things you're entitled to know. One, you're a wonderful kid. I thought so from the first. That's why I wanted you in the band. Just so you quit moping around, feeling sorry for yourself. What band? I always think there's a band, kid. What's the other thing I'm entitled to know? Well, actually, that thing's none of your business, now that I think about it. But, um... I wish you'd never come to River City. No, you don't, Winthrop. Sitter, you believe him? I believe everything he ever said. But he promised us. I know what he promised us. And it all happened just like he said. The flags, and the lights, and the colors, and the symbols. Where was all that? In the way every kid in this town walked around here all summer and looked and acted. Especially you and the parents too. Does Mama wish he never came to River City? Well, you, you do, don't you? No, Winthrop. Now go, Harold, please. Go on, Professor, hurry up. I can't go, Winthrop. Why not? Because for the first time in my life, I got my foot caught in the door. was love all around, but I never heard it singing. No, I never heard it at all, till there was you. Greg, Greg, they're here. That way, that way.
have interrupted the program at this point. Rest assured, this snake in our bosom would have been misapprehended by this time. Yes, and always remember, fellow River City Zians, I did everything in my power to prevent this dire happening from, uh, happening. Poor score. What have you done to get our money back? Yeah, that professor collected nearly $300 on uniforms just tonight. And we haven't even seen them uniforms yet. He's slippery, I told you. I haven't seen any uniform or my boys since just after supper. He's a kidnapper. Fine situation here. Poor score. Just a minute. Virtue has triumphed. The sword of retribution has cut down Professor Harold Hill. And if there are those, as I have heard, who are melting tar and collecting feathers, I will not say them nay. Well, I should think there ought to be some of you who could forget our everlasting Iowa stubborn chip on the shoulder arrogance long enough to remember River City before Harold Hill arrived. Do you remember? Well, do you? Surely some of you ought to be grateful to him for what he's brought to River City. And if so, I should think you'd want to admit it. You're wasting a great deal of time here. If there's a person in this hall who doesn't think this man Hill should be tarred and feathered, let him stand up. You really sit down. And the rest of you, standing there like a coat of Shropshire sheep. Have you people forgotten how you bought expensive uniforms, technical instruction books, and high-priced band instruments? Have you forgotten the clear understanding and warranty that your children would be taught to play in a band? Well, where's the band? Where's the band? Think, men. Think. That's my Marty! That too was my Marty! Eddie, that's Eddie's paradise. Linus, play for me, son! Play for me! Davy, my Davy! This is Brew, that's Winthrop.
stage management, and all of these wonderful costumes. I'd also like to thank Ms. Danielle Seba. Made all of this happen. And most of all, we'd like to thank Ms. Markham. Thank you, thank you very much. So I would like to say just a quick word of thanks and I wrote it down because last night I couldn't remember everyone and I hope if I don't name you by name, please know it takes a huge team to put together a production like this and everyone has stepped forward and given their time and talents and we're very thankful. So as I call your name, if you would stand up and remain standing, um, of course, the cast and crew. Good job, you guys. Mm -hmm. Danielle Seba, our director. Mallory Dawson, costumes, as they said, and stage managing. Our guest choreographer was Christy Osterhus, and she was here last night, but we give her a round of applause for the dancing. Mm -hmm. And then tickling me. Uh, set construction, Matt Rue, Marty Henson, Dimitri Smirinsky, and the cast and crew. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Uh -huh. Huge. Set design, Amy Endlich and crew, if you helped with that, stand up. Ticketing and volunteers, Lynn Kratz, and everyone who helped at the ticketing table. Yes, and volunteer downstairs chaperones. They're probably still down there. Huge with this many kids. Administration, Sarah Tinsley, Cynthia Kinney, Tony Saba, Fine Arts Committee. Mm -hmm. Alicia Stark, uh, publicity and fundraising, Amy Rue. Program, Sabrina Williamson, Susan Dell, if you helped with any of that, stay standing. Orchestra, Jeff Padilla and Rebecca Fisher. Lighting, thank you. Lighting, John Steinklobber, Jacob Rogers, Zachary Gere, and Ben Alton. Did I forget anybody up there? Awesome job. Ah. <laughs> And of course, on sound, Mike Markham and Jonathan Fisher. Thank you, well done. And Benjamin Williams, is Benjamin out here? Yes, thank you. Okay. Our First Press family and friends, if you would thank you for use of your building. And those of you who came out to support us tonight, Let's stand, please. And our new storage facility, the Kinney family. Yay. Thank you. So, okay, I guess you could sit down. Um, there is a reception in Smith Hall. Thank you all for coming. And if you don't mind going out and around, if you need assistance with the elevator, you could come backstage. Um, but enjoy the reception and look forward to future productions. Thank you. Good night.